When browsing through the shelves of a library, the learning possibilities are endless. A person can walk into a library and pick up any type of book or periodical, ranging from a children's novel to a New York Times article from three years ago. But imagine being in a room surrounded by thousands of books and having no type of organization. Dating back to the late 1700s in France, the first inventory of books was created to keep each collection of books in order. This inventory came along with a set of instructions called the French Cataloging Code of 1791. This process entailed writing the name of each book on a card along with other information such as its author and the time it was published. Hi, I'm Christy Harris and on today's show I will discuss the rise and the fall of the card catalog. In 1840, the idea of cataloging library books was adapted. Thaddeus William Harris, a Harvard librarian, created a slip catalog to store information about each of the books in the library. This catalog was primarily for the staff's use, allowing organization and order within the library. Twenty years later, another Harvard librarian, John Lagden Sibley, suggested the card catalog to be of public use. This catalog would allow the library's collection to stay up to date and accurate. The cards were handwritten and placed alphabetically in wooden drawers. As time passed, the cards came in standard sizes, measuring 7.5 by 12 centimeters. In 1893, libraries began printing the catalog cards, and in 1901, the cards were being sold all over the country. Later, in the 1960s, the Online Computer Library Center was created in Dublin, Ohio, and allowed the information that was once stored on handwritten cards to now be accessed and updated electronically. This invention set the standards for the future and was the foundation behind the online public access cards. After this, most libraries converted to online catalogs because of the fact that it saved time, space, and money. Statistics from the University of Tennessee show that they saved about $15,000 each year just by converting to the online system. This system is still used today and has become more convenient than ever. One can now check from his or her own computer to see whether or not their desired book is available from their local library without even leaving their own home. This process has evolved over the years, simplifying itself for the public. I had the opportunity to speak with Sacred Heart Reference Librarian Barbara Hampton, who was able to tell us exactly how the online catalog works. Libraries use uh, the internet extensively, both for their own collections and to access other materials. This is our home page, and I use it to find items in our catalog uh, by searching for keywords, for titles, authors, but it's very limited because it only searches a summary description of the book. Uh, I like to use instead ebooks when I have the opportunity because ebooks allow you to search every single word in the book. And so you get a much more complete record. We have about uh, 35,000 books in eBury online and several thousand in other uh, electronic collections. Uh, we also have electronic uh, journals in a large number of databases which you can search individually or in groups, depending on the subject area you're interested in. And we also have uh, access to uh, the tools that the Connecticut libraries uh, provide through the state, uh, so we can find books in other libraries that you may need for interlibrary loan, and access uh, the journal collections that they provide. Uh, when all that is done, that's a good time to also consider uh, the public internet. All these items are things that are paid for with your tuition, so they're only available to you as a Sacred Heart student using your Sacred Heart ID. But there are also valuable things that are available for free through Google, and we use those resources as well. Reporting for Demtech.org, this is Christy Harris.